Ni hao, ni hao, ichi ni san, hello, bonjour, hi, we're live, welcome to VR Essentials, welcome back, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality, of course, so let's get cracking with the video, because today we're going to be talking about the HTC Vive, I'm going to give you my first impression, there are certain things that are missing, let's go through the videos, let's go through all the specs, let's talk about all the stuff that all the others forgot talking about, and of course, timestamps in the description below if you want to skip anything in this video and by the way thank you for coming back to the channel to our regular viewers and awesome subscribers because it's thanks to you that i'll keep uploading new videos of course to this channel and a big welcome to you if it's your first time to the channel of course Whew, a lot of mayhem a lot of excitement let's get cracking let's transition over so today we're going to go to my good friend's website uh, who's called Anthony. He has a blog called The Ghost House. Guys, I really recommend you go and check this out. This guy is the only guy I know in the world of VR who blogs so intricately about all the various different things. Uh, so do go and check him out. And also we've interviewed him. He will be on the channel very soon. So do make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Now, first of all, let's play the videos and then let's talk about this. All right. Snap on face cushion. All right, pretty practical. Immersive spatial audio, all right. Active cooling, okay. IPD adjustment. Pair via Bluetooth, okay. So guys, the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that you can actually use your phone as a controller. Now, I personally think that is very cool. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's going to be the whole like, you know, for those who own a drone and you use your phone to pilot the drone, do you think it's going to be kind of that sensation where basically, you know, you actually need you know, a proper controller to be able to to get the sense of what's going on? Or do you think that using a phone is actually the way forward? You know, it might be a nice thing not to have. But then if you want to use two controllers, uh, can you use two phones? Well, what do you guys think? Do you think this is a way forward in VR to have the capability to use your phone as a controller? Or do you think yeah, you would much rather have something in your hand that feels tactile? You know, if I go to my Pico Neo controllers, you know, they're not the best of controllers in terms of design, but you know, it's nice to have something here in my, I can press buttons and things that if I'm gonna be using my phone, I think it's my very poor iOS phone, very old phone, um, you know, where you have to press things and, and then, you know, you're not on the headset, you can't see what you're pressing on. There's no tactile feeling in terms of, yeah, everything is flat, right? So what do you guys, what do you guys think about this? Leave, leave a comment below and let, let me know. Let's uh, go back to the video. Uh, and see what else is going on here. All right, so you can uh, mirror to the devices. Guys, we all know that the Oculus Quest has had so many issues to mirror their games uh, onto various different devices. I don't even know if this has been fixed yet, but mirroring is something that people really want, especially when they want to, um, you know, be able to 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 basically, uh, you know, just play their games with friends and get the friends to see what they're doing. Or also, if you're an enterprise and you want to mirror cast things so your potential clients can see what you're doing if you're giving a presentation or you're taking part in a trade show and you want other people to see what you're doing. These are kind of things, you know, very simple. I can't believe that we're three years into VR standalone and all this, and this still hasn't been that fixed. I, I don't know. Let's just watch the video and transition back. All right. Wow. 
wind down with ASMR. So basically, mixed reality, just a viewing experience. And by the way, guys, what do you think of the actual design um, of the VR headset itself? Do you guys like it? Do you think, I mean, uh, there were some articles saying it looks like, makes people look like a bug, which I thought was not nice because we want more competition and HTC are trying their best. Uh, however, they're doing it, you know, to compete with uh, Facebook and, and various other people in order to get their headsets to the mainstream. So I think, in my opinion, we should be uh, more forthcoming and, and, and you know, uh, more positive in terms of trying to help HTC. Uh, of course, if they're going to create a device that doesn't work at all and all these kind of things, we have to be honest as well. But I'm just saying, um, leave a comment below. What do you think of the design? Do you think it's cool? I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of out there. I think it looks kind of different. You know, everything is perception. If no one had mentioned the word bug to me, I maybe would not even think about it. To me, it looks more like a, I don't know, a headset for... Uh, you know, out of that movie with Will Smith, I can't remember the name of it, uh, or a headset like a jet pilot, you know, but everything is open to interpretation, right? So let's go back to the um, to the blog for a second. So let me exit a full screen mode. There we go. So the specifications, um, at the moment, the chipset is unannounced. Now, this is the thing. They didn't actually say what's the chipset in inside. I would think if it's going to be less powerful than a Snapdragon XR2, it's either the XR1 or it's a Qualcomm uh, Quest 1. So the Quest Oculus Quest 1 chip was the uh, Qualcomm A3, uh, what was it? What was the chipset? Oh my God. Uh, I can't remember the chipset inside of the Oculus Quest 1. Just give me a minute. It's not, it was a Snapdragon. Uh, oh, they were. 835. So, Snapdragon 835. Uh, or, or something around there, I, I would imagine. Uh, and then the other thing is, it's only 75 uh, megahertz, so it can only, although it's not too bad, it's, you know, it's a base case. Uh, but I think in terms of, you know, if we talk about uh, where VR is today, really you know we want a minimum of 90 hertz that's you know that that is really the standard today is 90 hertz so 75 hertz frames per second is not too bad it's going to be comfortable but i think 90 hertz is really the standard so uh, there's a bit of a slight for 499 us dollars i think it should have been at least a 90 hertz uh, vr headset but that that's just you know my personal opinion uh maybe you guys I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Uh, field of view, 100 degrees. Now, this is pretty standard. I think um, 189 grams. Now, this is really what's interesting to me is that it really is very portable and very light. And this is the way forward for VR. So definitely a good thing there. I think for the cooling system, it's probably going to be the same as the Quest 2 or something around there. So it's probably going to keep your, or maybe the Oculus Go, I would say. Um, so I don't, I don't know, I'm not a technologist, guys, I'm speculating, but I doubt it's going to be super intense cooling in there because it's this headset is meant for light use. Um, so I would say that the cooling system is probably meant for light use as well. And also the frame per second is only 75, so it's probably just good enough to you know cool the things that it needs to cool uh, over a period of, let's say, a couple of years or three years before perhaps there may be some overheating issues. Uh, I think for connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, USB-C, yeah, I mean, okay, fine, put it down, but I don't see how this really makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, integrated speakers, I'm not sure if the speakers are going to be fantastic. Um, generally, we all prefer to have headphones. There's no mention of a headphone jack there, and I didn't see one on the actual design. So again, for me, that's a bit of a failing uh, on the design part. But let's look at the second uh, second video. I do want to talk about the IPD adjustment uh, very quickly because this is something that for a lot of people who have the Oculus Quest have complained about. The fact that you have to, I mean, the, the thing is, 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 the same thing with this design actually is 
you have to remove the headset to adjust. You can't do it as you do it now. This, um, I, don't, I think ergonomically it's a design flaw. I think future headset, it's better to have it on there. I think with the, you know, if you look at the HP Reverb G2 just next to me, at least you can do it here. With the Pico, you can, oh, the Pico Neo 3 has it under as well. Uh, the Quest 1 has it under. I think this is something that should be standard uh, and should be done at least outside the headset and not put the headset on. Oh, I can't see. Take it off. Boom. Put it on. Oh, I can't see. Take it off. Boom. Oh, I can't see. Boom. All the way to number five. Can you imagine? And then if you forget, you have to do that all over again. I think at the end of the day, uh, especially if you're going to do again for enterprise or you have friends at home, you want to pass a headset to someone else. Everyone has to keep adjusting it. Take it. It's just, uh, guys, I, what do you feel? Leave a comment below. But I feel again for 499 US dollars, this is something that should have been outside of the VR headset. I can understand that maybe, you know, there's a cost in terms of weight or uh, perhaps these kind of things. But I, I don't know. I don't think so. But it could also be because the technology, if maybe they have two different panels we're going to go through this maybe they have two different panels on each eye so that's the only way to adjust it and it's not one uh oled or lcd panel I, I don't know i'm not quite sure how they've done it but we'll go through that in just a minute i'm just saying it should be something that economically speaking should be under net above or around the headset and not inside of the headset what do you guys think leave a comment below love to give your opinions all right let's go back to uh to the video So yeah, so I to confirm, I really don't see uh, a headset jack at all. I think this is the kind of stuff, you know, uh, personally, I buy things like camera equipment, right? I always want a headphone jack in my camera, no matter what, to be able to hear, um, you know, my sound recording or something like that. If there's no headphone jack, I would just won't buy the camera. And I think it's the same thing for me in terms of VR. I don't want to have Bluetooth connected to my Excuse me, we're recording live, just a little bit. I don't want to have Bluetooth headphones connected to my phone or connected to my PC because it's going to be latency. We're not at that stage in technology yet where, you know, if you use Bluetooth technology for, for audio, for internal audio with pairing head, headphones or earbuds or whatever, it there's going to be a delay and it's going to break the immersion, especially if you're watching a movie on YouTube or, or big screen or something. It doesn't cut it for me. I need, and I also, okay, maybe like like the HP Reverb G2 or the Valve Index, you know, maybe you won't be able to, 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 to for, for someone else to hear the audio coming from the headset. Now that's fine, but I'm just saying, I much prefer being able to have the choice. I think for 499 US dollars, again, this is something that should be built in. I doubt it's going to, add a kilogram to the headset. I really doubt it, or even 200 grams. Okay, I'm not an expert, guys. I'm not an engineer, but I'm just saying, MRTB, if you're watching this video, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, because you're an engineer. Uh, and guys, if you're an engineer and you're watching, please leave a comment below. I just think this is something for 499 US dollars should have been there on this viewer. This should be a way to plug in some headphones directly from the headset. All right, let's go. Um, now let's go to his blog. Let me try to make it bigger so you guys can actually read. There we go. Uh, let me just make sure that you can actually see on the the video. Let me scroll back. Yes, you can see. Okay, good. Uh, so let's just scroll down. So Viflo description. HTC is coming back to consumers. Now this is great news, guys. Um, we know, of course, that the HTC Vive Pro 2. Now, we don't really know if the sale's any good. And, of course, a lot of complaints in terms of no upgrades for the uh, for the ones, yeah, using the old ones again. Uh, you know, so that wasn't great. Um, so so what, what Anthony says, Anthony basically has also worked with Jean-Michel Jean, by the way. Jean-Michel Jean, a huge guy in the world of uh, music. He's a huge global artist, very well known all over the world for doing holograms on the pyramids in Egypt and touring all over the world and stuff. So he's worked on, on projects with this guy and, and other things and also a whole bunch of other things. Go to his blog, learn about him. He's quite known in the world of VR, if you don't know this guy. Uh, from the scared ghost, 
uh, blog. So it looks a bit like the Huawei VR glasses. Yes, I do agree. Vive Flow is lightweight and its frames can be folded like the ones of standard glasses. Now, this is great news for VR, guys. And I really do think that they, it, they do look very elegant. Leave a comment below, as I mentioned before. What do you think about the design? Apart from being light, the glasses have also been studied for comfort with frames that could be enlarged to fit the shape of your head. And I do like the fact that um, you can actually snap the... Um, uh, I do like the magnetic technology that is and snaps to you know uh, the header i think that's that's pretty cool in its own right a fan should blow away warm air from your face so that you can enjoy vr without sweating now that is very very interesting that it has that so every lens feature adapter adjustment dial so we spoke about that that can create your eye impairment okay we spoke about that you have to wear or prescription lenses without you having to wear glasses or prescription lenses while using the headset. Ah, okay, now that's very, very interesting. Uh, guys, by the way, I just went for my second shot of the vaccine for COVID. So if I feel that I have a bit of headache or something coming, very sorry about that. Uh, like I'm just feeling a bit woozy, like just for a second, just right now. Uh, okay, I'm feeling better. Without you having to wear glasses or prescription lenses. Now that is very, very interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. The glasses can be this small because they feature pancake optics that allow the screen and the lenses to be closer than the usual Fresno, Fresno sorry, lenses scenario. Okay. Uh, the design introduces some issues like a lower field of view okay but it's 100 degrees it's not too bad to be honest not too bad at all HTC claims anyway a good fov of 100 degrees so we'll see uh we'll see what you know uh, if 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 mrtv is able to get a pair uh or you know voodoo vr get a pair let's see what they say guys i'm i'm really you know i'm on the phone all the time uh with the the general manager of htc literally let me show you um you know he's he's on my wechat i talk to him all the time and it's it's just it's so hard for me to, to be able to collaborate with these people but i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying i'm not giving up um but you know let's see what these guys say in terms of the fov the device is a standalone headset powered by a chip is not powerful as xr2 but we don't know what it is okay we spoke about that already two front cameras guarantee six off so there isn't Four cameras is two cameras, guys. Uh, that probably means there might be some hand tracking issues. Although, uh, oops, uh, wrong wrong thing there. Let me just transition over. So there's only two cameras. So there could be an issue for hand tracking, especially for any games that will require a lot of movement. Um, and also, to my knowledge, there aren't two controllers. There's only one for this specific VR headset. And also, as I mentioned, you can use your phone. So... 499 uh, okay okay let, let, let's 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 continue let's continue let's let's see what what else uh, there is to to this um, okay possibility of using your hands as control of the device okay all right so a leak from protocol talked about possibility of using your hands all right so in the future perhaps they're working on hand tracking technology not bad Let's see what they come up with, because hand tracking, to be honest with you, is still not there, especially with the Quest. Again, it's, uh, it's touch and go. I don't have the Quest, but I'm just telling you based on the feedback of other people. Uh, Viflow features no internal battery. It works by being connected to whatever power source that has a USB-C plug, your phone, your PC, or power adapter, or power bank. Ah, are you serious? Ah. No way! 399... What? Wait! What? Try and transition over... Wait! There's no internal battery! Ah! So you got to plug it to something to power it! Ah! Ah! That's why it's so cheap! And light! It's not cheap, sorry. Pardon me! There's no battery? 499 US dollars. Right. Okay. So I need to hook it up to my phone. Or whatever. 
Ah, okay, got it. Now, I didn't know that because they didn't say that in all the promotional videos. This is why everyone else hasn't talked about this kind of stuff. And we're talking about all the stuff the others are not talking about. All right, so what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Do you... I don't know, guys. I, I'm like, no, are you are you for real? No, come on, I misread. Can't be. Can't be la. As they say in, uh, in, in Singapore. Let me transition over. Let me reread. It works by being connected to whatever power source that has a USB-C plug. The design of the headset is nice. Of course, okay, forget about that. We talk about it. All right, so basically there is no... All right. So since the Oculus Go is on, Peter was a VR game machine at the moment. It's too cheap and has two game... Okay. HTC has designed, decided to aim the headset for other uses and in particular relaxation, productivity, media consumption, light entertainment. Now guys, as far as I know, and I've, I've, I've messaged the general manager uh, of HTC, as far as I know, there is no Vive port. There is no Vive port. There can't not be Vive port. How is that possible? How apparently this thing is powered and you have like a few apps. It doesn't have a whole library of apps you can access at this moment in time. So I'm not. I just don't know if this is a huge marketing blunder that again is going to cause uh, HTC to flop a potential device that has huge potential. I love HTC. I really want to work for HTC. I love their products. But guys, get your marketing right. This can't be right. They can't not be Viveport. How is that possible? I've messaged the GM. I said, is there Viveport? I'm waiting for a reply because guys, if there isn't Viveport in this thing, at least give, give people a Viveport. If there isn't Viveport, I'm really sorry, but I'm just not going to be willing to pay $499 US dollars for something that only has a few apps that are working. Not possible. Not possible. And I doubt the general consumer will as well. Anyway, let, let's, let, let's, I need confirmation on this. I, I will confirm in the comments when I get a reply on this. But if there isn't five for, I don't know. Let's go to this next video. Um, that's, oh, the video stopped working. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, why did it stop working, the video? All right, there we go. Okay, let me transition over. Uh, okay, and then, sorry guys, we're live, as you know. Okay, good. Let's play this video. All right. So this is a confirmation. You can tell the fact that this woman just plugged it in. As she put it, puts it on, you can see there's a cable there. You can see blatantly the cable there. Now, how, how can you see when you're using your phone? That's what I want to know. can she see? I need to know how she can see. So it's an MR viewer. So basically there's something inside the headset that makes it so you can see outside of it or is it specific? Is it at, I, I, we need to know about this.
So, I mean, clearly, I, I think in terms of marketing, it is very clever to... Um, oh, no, I forgot to transition over. Come on. Okay, I'm so, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, oh, man, we're live and I can't get back. I'm so sorry about this. Um, so, basically, we just looked at a video. Let, 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 let me just play the video as I talk because I think it'll be easier that way. Um, I think... Let me just transition over. Okay, here we go. Um, so basically, basically, the, the the questions that I have is first of all, how can you see the phone? How can you see the phone if you're browsing? I need to know how you can see the phone. Is it automatic? I do like the clever marketing in terms of you know making this headset specifically for calming, relaxing, uh, and also for being able to collaborate, uh, you know, for enterprises to be able to have meetings, uh, you know, in their Engage platform, which is partly, I think, funded by HTC, if I'm not wrong. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I think that is that is a clever form of marketing. But there are some questions. You, you, There is no battery. You have to connect it to something. Um, there is no, there's only one controller or you have to use your phone. Uh, I don't even know if there's a controller, but I think there is a controller. Um, and then later they're going to work on on uh, hand tracking as well. Okay, I got that part. Um, but then there's no Vive port, so it's very restrictive in terms of the actual, uh, you know, economics. So the company insists that a lot of the re relaxation use case and believes that it is a killer app for this device. I wonder if the meditation experiments by Inia Lafond during 30 Days in VR have been inspiration for it. Okay, so he's just talking about that kind of stuff. Um, so they, they focus on productivity. Yes, that's what we just talked about. Um, media consumption. Okay. And then the content. Viveflow works with Viveport. Okay. All right. So it will work with Viveport. Confirmed. It will work with Viveport. Okay. So sorry about that in the video uh, when I did mention that, you know, if, they, if it didn't work with Viveport, then obviously that would have been a big flop. Um, so Viveport basically... Uh, the usual mon uh, monthly subscription um, can run content compatible with single or three DOF controller. HTC is offering for a lighter plan costing $5.99 US dollars plus plus, of course, VAT and all this stuff uh, per month. The company is aiming at having 100 plus available pieces of content for the launch in November. Okay, all right. Well, at least, at least, you know, if, if it has Viveport, um, then, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. I think it's definitely much better if it has Viveport uh, because I wasn't sure if it would have Viveport. It doesn't, see, this is the problem with HTC's videos. It doesn't mention any of this stuff. Like, how would I know? How is the consumer going to know what is, how the headset works? How are they going to know? Like, it's really hard to know. So marketing, I think the marketing department, the PR department really need to, spice up the communication uh, in terms of what's available, what works or goes with the VR headset and all this kind of stuff. Because honestly, I thought there was no Viveport. That was my initial thing. And also, I thought there was battery. Like I go and buy the headset and I'm like, there's no battery. I'm like, what? WTF? What the? Beep? You know, I'm like, what? No battery? Ah, I didn't know that. So all these things have to be clearly marked on the packaging, on the box, in the marketing videos. It has to be said because I have to go and read a blog about it and tell me all these things. I think communication needs to be much clearer about all this stuff. All right, let's go back. Um, price and availability. Okay, we know the price. We know the availability. It's going to be very soon. Now, it is confirmed that this is a 6 off uh, headset, guys, uh, with 3 off as well. Uh, so 6 off means you will be able to bend uh, walk in VR, tilt your head and all these kind of things and feel like you're in the real world basically uh, but in a virtual world. And 3 off means you can only move your head left and right, up and down but you can't bend in VR and walk around within your environment. So it's just like a viewer basically. Um, and then the other problem is the price. The lightweight device costs 500 US dollars when for 400 you can buy a Quest 2. But guys, let's not forget that I don't think this is something you can compare to the, um, why is it that every time I transition, it's the wrong window that you can see. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Um, but basically, 
you know, let me just transition over so you have a bit of difference there. But basically, I don't think you can compare this headset to the Oculus Quest whatsoever. The Quest is a privacy data mining machine to suck up your data of what you do, what's in your uh, room. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a privacy data cow machine, sucks your data out. Whatever's in your room, it scans everything in your room. Um, it takes everything that you do, everything that you say, uh, all your movements, uh, your your audio, everything about you, and it sends it back to Facebook, creates a digital version of it, and then uses that data to sell it to third parties, although they allegedly say in their terms and conditions that they don't. Um, and then they use that data to subliminally change your habits without you even knowing about it so that you go and purchase things or vote for a specific president or get a specific vaccine or buy a specific medication or whatever it might be to change the fabric of society without you knowing it. That's the quest and the quest does that for cheaper so I cannot compare another device which basically doesn't do that. That device is purely meant to, if it does track your data, purely for the HTC purpose and not to use that data to change what you do when you're browsing Facebook and all these kind of things. It's got nothing to do with that. So you cannot compare a Facebook data war machine is what it is um, with potentially just a spying tool. All right, it's just, you know, all VR devices are spying tools, right? A phone is a spying tool, right? But at the end of the day, I'm just saying the level of privacy is not there. So you cannot compare. I honestly would spend the extra 200 US dollars just for not backing a brand that uses data to change the fabric of society. That's just my opinion. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Do you think my point of view is too extreme? Or do you think I'm right? Do you agree with me? You know, everyone has different opinions, right? But at the end of the day, I do think that it is expensive because for a couple hundred dollars more, you can have, let's just forget about the Quest for a moment. Let's just forget about it. Let's just imagine it doesn't even exist. Uh, for a few hundred dollars more, you can have a really cool Pico Neo headset. Uh, you can have an HP Reverb if you have a PC. Um, you know, there, there are alternative headsets out there that potentially can give you a really good VR experience, but not on the fly, not on the fly. If this was the only headset available that could enable you to move around, go different places, have a virtual reality experience, and there was no Facebook Quest at four, three hundred US dollars or whatever, then I think it would justify the cost. Then I think it would justify the cost. The only reason why the cost is not justified is because of the Oculus Quest 2. That is the only reason, guys. That is the only reason. But I think at the end of the day, 490 US dollars is actually an okay price because a proper VR device will cost you between 700 to 1,000 US dollars for proper VR experience. So I think 500 US dollars for something like this is actually reasonable. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I love you guys. Guys, this video is so long. I will do I will do the thank you, the thank you of you and mention your names and all these kind of things in the next video. This video is a little bit long. So but I just want to, you know, give a shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for subscribing, commenting, watching the video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys, take it easy.